Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here, and today we've got your first look at the new Wahoo Kicker bike. Uh, now this bike joins not only the tax bike, but other bikes as well at Eurobike, and vying for your money at sort of the high-end realm of indoor training. Now what I'm gonna do is walk through from the back of the bike to the front of the bike, and then we'll jump on and do a bit of a ride. Uh, and so we're gonna start off with some of the specs here, and the way to think about this bike is it's not just an indoor bike, uh, but it's also an indoor bike plus a climb. So if you're familiar with the Wahoo lineup of the climb that goes up and down to raise and lower your bike. The same is true here as well. So starting at the back of the bike here, we've got the flywheel. The flywheel is connected up to the drivetrain there via a belt system. Uh, so a little bit different than something like the Tax Neo, but it is electrical magnetic like the Tax Neo and the Tax bike. And then first for Wahoo, they have downhill drive resistance uh, or basically for momentum. So if I go ahead and as I'm pedaling downhill and stop pedal, it'll go stop pedaling, it'll go ahead and continue to move the bike forward or feel like you're moving it forward. In fact, you can see that right here by just simply doing this, it keeps on spinning. So obviously I didn't push it very far and it kept on going uh, for a little while there. Moving forward on the bike here, on the bottom you have wheels so you can go ahead and just lift up the entire unit like this, roll it around wherever you wanna go. It is fairly heavy, um, but it's not horribly so. As you move forward, you've got numerous ways to adjust the bike. So up here is a way to go up and down with a saddle. Um, and what's really cool is Wahoo's entire fit system, they have built into their app. So the whole setup process is super app based, which is something that Wahoo tends to be known for in terms of having a very smooth app experience for their products. Uh, that's why people end up buying a lot of Wahoo products is because of that app setup process. And it's actually really impressive. So you can do kind of three different categories. One, you can use a professional fit system where you enter those coordinates um, or those metrics into the app and it tells you exactly what to set up here automatically based on something like retool or whatnot. Two, you can go ahead and actually take a picture of your bike and then it'll go ahead and tell you the exact uh, points on the rulers that are listed on the bike here as to match your actual bike, which is pretty cool. Um, or you can just kind of like freestyle it and adjust these levers and whatnot uh, based on your height and whatnot in the app itself. So a lot of options. I ignored all of those options and just simply adjusted the levers until it felt right. Um, but if it was your own bike, you'd probably spend a little bit of time to do that right. So in terms of adjustability here, you've got up and down as I just talked about. Taking this level right here, you can go forward and back. So I can just slide this forward or flat, slide it back and just simply locks in place. The same is true right here to go forward and back, and then here to go up and down uh, for the entire handlebars. Uh, comparing this to the tax bike a little bit, I would say this system is a little bit easier to use because the tax bike requires kind of this weird like lever thing. It's something that's, it's not horrible, but it's not as efficient as this, especially if a multi-user environment. If it's just you and a bike, it's pretty much a wash between the two in terms of changing things, though the Wahoo set setup here for the app-based piece is way more advanced than what tax has there. Oh, and I almost forgot one more thing, which is the frame up and down as well. So right here, another lever to go up and down for the entire bit. Speaking of up and down, at the bottom down there, so this doohickey right here is the actuator for the built-in climb. And so that allows you to move the entire bike up and down. And there's a small display screen right there that you can see, and then next to that, there is a lock. So just like you had the lock on the Wahoo climb in the past that you can lock it so it doesn't go up and down. So if a small animal or pet or person gets below there somehow, it doesn't squish them, uh, that same thing exists here as well. And then you can use the buttons here to move the bike up and down. So in this case, I'm going up and down, <clears throat> up to 20%, down to negative 15%. Uh, and of course, if you're using an app like Zwift or Full Gas or whatnot, they'll do this automatically based on the train of the app. Uh, so pretty cool stuff there, given that's built in. And obviously, they're the only one on the market that has this built into the bike itself. Next, in terms of adjustability, is the crank arms. Uh, now, you see these holes there. And what those are is those go to different crank arm lengths. So you have right here 165, 167.5, 170, 172.5, and 175. Uh, they do include flats for pedals. This is obviously not flats, these are just regular clipping pedals. And you can just simply spin your own pedals into that um, however you want to. So you can choose whatever pedal types you want there. You've got your water bottle holder. Uh, you will not get a DC Ramaker water bottle with your, your bike. Um, you'll have to go off and, and buy your own. Maybe you get a Wahoo one, I don't, I don't know, but not that one. Uh, speaking of when you get that bike, the app will actually walk you through setup as well. Uh, so the app kind of goes step by step. Again, it's super, super clean. Having done the setup of the tax bike compared to this, um, that was sort of like a bit of an adventure of you open up Ikea style and it's super easy, but it's not as clean as this. Um, now, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day in terms of time taken to assemble them. No, probably not. They're both about a half an hour to do. Um, this just 
makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside uh, compared to that is a little more Ikea. Though I like Ikea, like the meatballs, they're pretty awesome. Oh, just a quick interruption right now. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom right now. Uh, before we continue on, it really helps with the video as well as the channel quite a bit. Okay, so on to the last piece of the bike here with that quick camera change uh, is the shifting. And this is something that's it's really fascinating how they've done this. Again, app driven, kind of the, the kind of the Wahoo mantra, if you will. Uh, so when you set up the bike, you choose what kind of shifting you want, and you're probably gonna choose based on what your bike is in real life. So if you have a SRAM ETAP, you can choose SRAM ETAP. If you've got Shimano DI2, you can choose Shimano DI2. If you've got Campagnolo, you can choose that as well. Like it's all an option there. And then even further than that, you can choose what kind of virtual cassette you have, as well as what kind of virtual chain rings you have. Do you have a one by, two by, a three by? In other words, how many chain rings in the front do you want? And then in the cassette, what kind of cassette do you want? You can define all that within the app itself. Again, super, super duper clean. Uh, better than what I've seen from both uh, Watt Bike with the Atom or Tax with the Tax Bike. Uh, those, those two aren't like terribly far off from this concept, but this is again, very Wahoo app driven clean. Uh, so in terms of buttons and whatnot, you've got a couple buttons here. Uh, the first one over here on the left hand side, controls going up and down. So you can see right there, the tilts going up and down, the actuator that we talked about in the back there. Uh, and then you've also got the brake levers here. The brake levers will actually stop the flywheel itself. Now, unfortunately, Zwift does not yet support that today, so you doesn't really stop your avatar in Zwift, but there are apps that may be out there that will uh, support this sooner in Zwift, and therefore you can actually like brake, which may be useful in some sort of uh, kind of e-racing type scenarios. So if you watch this here, I'm just gonna go ahead and spin this forward. And then if I hit the brakes here, um, it'll go ahead and stop it pretty quickly. I'll show you what I'm actually riding uh, to show you how it stops there pretty quickly. But kind of pretty neat stuff. So with that, I think I've walked through everything. Oh, in terms of shifters, you've got buttons right here on both sides as well. And again, those are how you configure it. So in my case, I've configured it with uh, SRAM ETAP, so I can do a long hold of both of them to go ahead and uh, shift my front ring. And then you'll see on this little display right there, there's two numbers. The top number shows you your front ring uh, setup. So in a one by, it wouldn't really show you anything. Uh, just show you that one gear. If you had a two by, so two chain rings like on a normal bike, then it would show you which gearing you're in one or two and then the back number there shows you uh, your gearing in the back uh, so very similar to what you'd see on the tax bike or what you'd see on uh, the atom up on display there you are not shown no gears in Zwift at least not on Mac for me anyways which is kind of a bit of a bummer because this isn't like a great location to look at um, in terms of seeing that down there versus it is on the screen to see what gear you're in. Uh, over time, you'll probably get that more based on feel, but having ridden the tax bike quite a bit as well as the Watt Bike Atom quite a bit um, over the last year, I think in both cases, it is handy having that on the screen itself. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump on it there uh, and get it going. And you can see I've got it recording on a Zwift up there. I've already set it up. And I've got it set up to automatically adjust the resistance so it's unlocked uh, and there's a lock and unlock button. You just press this right there to lock or unlock uh, the climb to go up and down. So you can see, um, as I've just said back to unlock actually, it went ahead and it went down a little bit. I'm at 0% grade right now on Zwift. I'm gonna go ahead here and get cooking. In terms of road feel, the best way I can describe it is clean. It's very, very smooth. It just feels buttery. It doesn't feel like uh, Le Mans Revolution, you know, um, road like no, but it feels very, very clean. So I don't feel like any grinding in there. I don't feel any kind of weirdness on the actual road feel. Um, it's not too shabby. If I go to sprint here, it reacts pretty well. Maybe a little bit sluggish, um, but in terms of getting up there, but it also just could be my legs. But otherwise it's, it's a very clean feel though. There's no like, immediate throw down a resistance that feels awkward there. From an audio standpoint, it's virtually silent. Um, you do hear, of course, that belt down there, but it's very, 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 very faint. Um, I'm trying to think of like a, an equivalent sound that you'd have in your household. It's not much. You know, we kind of like, kind of like the sound of a microwave in the background. Not the beeping part, but just sort of that like gentle hum that you hear when you're heating up your, whatever it is you're heating up in the microwave. Very similar to that. Any sort of fan you have would easily be louder than that. Reaction time on the shifters is quick. I can go through the cassette. Yeah, it's super quick on the reaction time with shifters, which is nice. And virtually instantaneous. 
overall I'd say row feels pretty good. Now I'd have to put in a full session to kind of get the, the real feel of things and compare it um, between all the other bikes out there, but not too bad for sort of a first look at things. Okay, so one minor thing to mention, it's pretty cool, is that the bike also supports dual Bluetooth smart connectivity, something that Wahoo actually started off with the headwind fan last year doing, and allows you to have multiple devices connect to the bike over Bluetooth smart, so they're not limited to just a single device, like a lot of the existing sensors and trainers are today. Okay, so there you go, a first look at the new Wahoo bike. Uh, now, here's the bad news, it's not cheap. 3,500 bucks to be precise. And the other bit of bad news is availability. It's pretty unlikely you're gonna be able to pick this up tomorrow. I mean, there's a chance, there's a very, very slim chance, like the same sort of chance that a Ben and Jerry truck is gonna show up right now behind the camera and give me free ice cream, but it's plausible. Um, what's more likely is that you're probably talking later on this year. And in talking to Wahoo, they may have some initial units available like very near shroom, but a very, very small number of those units. Uh, the vast majority of them will come again later on this year. And that's probably gonna be a bit of a challenge. Like if you look at Tax, for example, they've started shipping out uh, their bikes here at Eurobike. That's sort of their big announcement is they're now shipping. Uh, Wattbike has been in the market now for almost what, two years, I think, uh, shipping units. So they definitely have a first mover advantage there. Uh, though I think the hardware here does stand up on its own. If you look at the price point, the Tax bike is only a couple hundred dollars cheaper, um, but it lacks the up and down aspect of the Wahoo bike. Uh, on the flip side, the Tax bike does have a display. Uh, it has two USB ports the front versus just the one that's down here has a whole console there so so there are things sort of pros and cons uh, to each bike that you probably want to look through I'll definitely do a more of a full like versus uh, type series between the the main bikes out there depending on what else is announced here at uh, Eurobike down the road probably sent them this fall and talk through some of those nuances uh, but so far I'm impressed with this I think that's a pretty good offering into the marketplace like I said before all these bikes are going to be expensive that's just sort of the reality of this particular aspect of it um, though the watt bike atom is significantly less costly but it's also less of a mechanical thing if you will uh, than some of these other units okay so there you go a complete look at the new wahoo bike again stay tuned for the full review down the road at some point this isn't a review i just toyed with the bike a little bit played with it rode for a little bit uh simple as that if you're new around here, whack that like button at the bottom or the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. There is a boatload of sports technology still to come here from Eurobike as well as IFA, which is coming up starting tomorrow on the wearables front. Uh, there's a lot more stuff. It's a, a lot of stuff. You don't want to miss any of it. With that, have a good one.